Where's your boss? Get a shave. Morning, Dr. Losey. Ward, the man you jailed last night is dead. From appearances, he was beaten to death. Mr. Ward, I said the man is dead. I heard you. Well, it shouldn't have started all the commotion he did. Uh, well, well, Mr. Stam, I hear he liked to tour your saloon, huh? Nothing that couldn't be fixed. This fella, police commissioner of New York City. He said, well, you get uh, mushy with criminals. Start treating them like they're your fellow man. You're just asking for trouble. God almighty, I don't believe it. Hey, Will! You sure that was Kane? Not to know Will Kane. He was in here not 30 minutes before Frank Miller got off that train. Will blew out his lights. Yeah, that's Will Kane, all right. Was Marshall here, Mr. Ward? Right before you took on the job? That's our future. Black one is a stud. The rest of them are his ladies. Oh, they look fine, Will. Hey, Will! Is that you? Oh, Virgil. Amy? Hello, Virgil.
Where in the hell are we? Hadleyville. Where in the hell you think? Morning, deputy. Seen your name on that bill of sale? I couldn't believe it. That our Will Kane coming to pick up a string? Well, it's more than a string, Virgil. We're gonna build with that stallion and those brood mares. Add them to the Mustangs we've been herding. We're gonna have the horse ranch of Roma County. Amy, you're sure looking good. Oh, well, thank you, Virgil. I think I'd feel better, though, if I could freshen up a bit. Oh, hey, hey, you bet. Come on inside. Well, how about a little green river to wash down that dust? Oh, man, it sure is good to see y'all. Going into town. That's good. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, listen, everybody I know, we felt awful bad after it was all over and you left like that. Now, Virgil, that's done. There's no need to talk about it. I was just telling Amy how most of us feel. Well, Virgil will get the bill to sell and we'll have a drink. Amy, go on in there and have some privacy. All right, thank you. Step over to the bar, Will. We'll get her done. Here, one black stallion, six brood mares. That's right. It's a heavy piece of change, Will. Don't worry, Virgil, we're good. Oh, I'm not worried. I'm just tickled you're doing so well, that's all. I uh, make this draft out to you, Virgil. <laughs> I wish it was so. I'm, I'm still working for wages and probably always will. You uh, buy that string uh, sight unseen? Nope. Company had them on grays down near Solo. And pick that stock, fifteen hundred dollars worth. But I'll, pretty soon I'll be delivering though instead of buying. Got some mighty fine mares and foals in the summer pasture. Sit down, Will. Take her easy. Well, I'll be damned. See where you elected Harold Patton, Justice of the Peace. Uh, Three months. I don't care who your sire is, just tell me how much money you want, that's all. What I'm saying is that the company don't have any stock that's not already been sold. No, no, there's a whole herd of them right out there in the corral. Well, I'm trying to tell him that those horses aren't for sale. Well, I got some green stock you can buy, but just not those outside. Shouldn't I recognize you from somewhere or another? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. Maybe we can do some business. Already know yours, Ben Irons. We spent time in jail together. <laughs> well, that must have been uh, way back in my wicked youth. Somewhere too long ago, a couple of years, maybe. 
the fact. Am I? Go ahead. What were you in for? I wasn't, you were. I was law. Will Kane. Yeah, we played draw poker while you were waiting on transport to Yuma Penitentiary. Huh. That's a fact. If I remember correct, I think you took me for about $20. It was more like 40. Well, you're famous. What are you doing walking around looking like a saddle tramp? Make a deal yet? Want the black stallion? This man here says uh, his stock's not for sale. But we uh, got him saddled up outside. So you make a deal. Hunt it for the stud. Well, now, that is some deal. Uh, you see, that stud is worth 900 to anybody that knows a horse from a mule. Harlan, I think he's telling you to take the saddles off. That's what he's saying, huh? Well, either you pull them off or I will. Meet Harlan Tyler out of Odessa. Young man looking to make a name for himself, one way or another. Harlan, this here gent was one time a famous lawman. Looks like a grub line saddle tramp. Son, you don't want to do what you're thinking. I don't, huh? You can't talk to him, huh? No, I'm just his interpreter. Ben, he touches his gun, I go to you first, and then him. That's a stylish bluff. Make the poor child stop and consider. Almost like you think you could take us both. Well, I got no reason to doubt it. Here is Will Kane. The man has shot Frank Miller. Mr. Kane. <laughs> you will have times like this, won't you? I, I, I didn't know, Mr. Kane. I... Well, learn and live, huh, kid? Learn and live. Ben, looks like there's a posse out there. Come on out of there with your hands up! Oh, my lord, it's Mr. Ward. Man, we better do what he says. Ward? Quick. J. D. Ward. Your marshal is J. D. Ward. Going on a year since Will left. Irons! Anybody in there? Come out now! I think somewhere we got off the wrong stop. J.D. Ward. Come on out of there! Now! Come on, we gotta get out. The man's gonna have to step in here. He wants my hide. He ain't done nothing to him. 
I don't even know where we're at. Don't stop out of hell. You don't think of some way quick. Find a way out of here, run or something. <laughs> What the hell did you do? I didn't do nothing. Hey, look, don't ask me. Ask him. That man's crazy what he is. Hold your fire. Let me get my wife out of here. Come on, Amy. Come on, Virgin. Hold your fire. That there is uh, Will King. He's the former marshal of Hadleyville. His wife. Mr. Ward, I think you might have the wrong party. Ben Irons claims he's pure. Well, he does, huh? Well, this here Dodger says he's wanted for killing a man for robbing a bank. Van Horn. Can I see that? Darrell, you're going to discuss our business or get it done? Yes, sir. Kane, stay where you are. Captain. Here comes Kane. You're wanted for murder. Murder? Uh-uh, he's making it up. I never killed anybody in my whole life. During the robbery of the Van Horn Bank. I never even been in Van Horn. When was this? I don't know. They got a dodger on you. 5,000 dead or alive. Nah, no, I've never been worth anywhere near that much. It's got to be somebody else. Stay put. There he is. That's him. That's Ben Irons in the doorway there. I see him. Boy, right here, Captain. Get out of my line of fire, Kane. The man says he was never in Van Horn. When I fire the rest of you, open up on the windows. Don't quit till I tell you. Wait a minute. Talk to the man. Get down.
You got him, Cap. Somebody fetch him. I load up the chuck box. Stores three, four days. Ten man posse. Yes, sir. Fetch your people. They get up in the high reaches. You're gonna have a time. You sniffing their trails before you know it, Captain. Is this one anybody? Don't recognize him from none of the pictures. What'll I do with it? How should I know? Virgil, why don't you bury this somewhere, huh? Unless you want to. If you don't know him, why'd you shoot him? You're the one done Frank Miller, huh? That mean I have to answer to you? But you're gonna answer to somebody. You killed a man, shot my horses for no reason. Listen, Will, it's all right. The company hadn't sold you the horses yet. I took delivery and paid $1,500. Now I got three stolen and two dead and two have to be destroyed. <laughs> Your day ain't turning out too good, is it? Why don't you sue the county and I'll see you in court in a year or two? I'll tear up your draft, Will. The company wouldn't know the difference. I appreciate it, Virgil, but as soon as it was found out, you'd be fired and you know it. Don't do nothing dumb, Will. They're only horses. I'll get you another stud bunch and put them on account. But don't do nothing dumb, all right? All right, Virgil. Marshall is not a law man, he's a bounty hunter. Well, according to this, Ben Iron is a fugitive. Ward's got every right to shoot him if he sees fit. Well, the date of this robbery, April, three years ago, Ben Irons was here in my custody waiting extradition. Now, I know for a fact he was sent to Yuma prison. What, what I think you should do, Will, you know, about your loss, is get yourself a lawyer and file a damage suit. Against who? The Marshal or the county? Well, no, against Irons. I mean, Mr. Ward was just acting in his official capacity, so it had to be Irons caused the loss. Stole two of the horses, isn't that right? I can serve Irons a subpoena, can I? Anybody can. Subpoena for what? To bring him to claims court. Now, if Irons owes me $1,500, he ain't no good to me dead, is he? Well, it, it would be better, much better, if Ward arrests him, see? Th then you bring your, your suit. Don't interfere with Mr. Ward, huh? Well, he has his ways, you know, methods of doing things. Always though he holds with the letter of the law. Harold, I respect your office, but the longer we sit here chatting, the closer Ben Irons is to being dead before I can get near him. Amy, I don't see any other way to do this. I know you don't. I just want to be sure why you're doing it, if you know why. Well, they'll bring irons to court, see if we can collect. A year ago, Will, a man threatened to kill you. I didn't understand why then you had to face him. You remember I refused to wait to see if I was going to be a wife or a widow? But you did stay. Yes, I did. And after I said I would never again question your sense of right and wrong. Because I saw, Will, that you feel obligations that most men could never bear. Will, I just hope you're doing this for us. And not because 
J.D. Ward rubs your pride the wrong way. Whatever I do is for us. Now, you know that. I don't have to settle anything with Ward. But Amy, don't... Don't ask me to step out of his way. Please. Town marshal and hires trackers. We got our eyes watching every move Mr. Ben Irons makes. He and his partner will lay low for a while and then try to edge their way out. You run the hounds and then Ward comes in for the kill. What does he do then? Throw you a bone? Man pays me a wage, I give him a day's work. He don't make me do nothing I don't want to. I see him. Like home, huh? Well, pulling field duty doesn't mean it has to be a hardship. Well, come on, step down. Tell us all about how you shot Frank Miller and those bad boys of his. <laughs> I'm sure you enjoy telling it. I've got a court order subpoena for Ben Irons to appear on a civil matter. I want to try and see that he does. You got a court order, huh? Well, I got a 44 Henry here that says I get first dibs on him. But why don't you just take your court order and put it in your outhouse where it'll do some good? <laughs> you know, I can prove Ben Irons was in Yuma prison during the time of the Van Horn robbery. You shoot him, I'll see you're charged with murder. All I know is the one at Dodger says dead or alive. Question here is, what's your interest? 1,500 in damages, nothing else. Oh, really? Well, now, that's peculiar. Because what I see in your eyes is reward money. 5,000 script and a chance to parade. Ben Irons up the street with the whole town watching. Here he comes, the hero of Hadleyville. 
<laughs> Miss all that, do you? There's no mistaking where we stand, is there? Unless I see you on a ridge somewhere and mistake you for Ben Irons. <laughs> Any idea where we're at? On Southerly, Drag and Tail. We're heading east. Well, we're taking a roundabout way. You see that gap way off there? The yon side of that pass is Mexico. Three days ride. My mortal fear, Harlan, is that when you go, you'll take me with you. I don't need your mouth, company neither. Nope. You're just gonna show what a booger you are all by yourself. Even if it kills you.
Like hell. Move out, boy, and don't talk to no strangers. <laughs> Spotted, Captain. Oh, well, now, am I going to be needing my shooting coat? Uh, I believe so, Captain. What? You believe? Going to get you that shot, Captain. The rest is up to you. Oh, yeah. You flush him out. I bet him down. Down to Bronco. You sure? Now listen, boy, you gotta trust somebody in this life. I'm all you got. See him about 300 yards. More like four. Better hurry, Cap. Come on, boy.
you owe me fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars? That's right. Well, mister, all I got's ten dollars. You can have it. Look, you were gonna buy horses with that? Well, Harlan there, he had a script, most of what we had. Hey, are you gonna just leave me here? you a question. Go ahead. Whose side are you on, anyhow? Look, I was taking you to claims court. Not a lot of good that'll do. I mean, what the hell are you worth? Well, I'm not rich at the moment, but I'm grateful, and I am resourceful. Right now, you're a lot of dead weight to get you a mount. Okay with me. serving your time. Well, he was there when I got in. He left a year before I got out. The man was famous for tracking escaped convicts. To. Yeah, you sure are. How's a convict named Otis something? Ran off from a work gang. I tracked him all the way down from Yuma into this Saguaro country. <laughs> remember that one? Otis something? It was part niggers, I remember. Well, we, uh, we headed for this well. I can't remember the name. It's some little mud hole place. See, we got there first. Now, this Otis had the hole up out there in the rocks. Well. I just sat there in the shade by the water, knowing the nigger would have to come out sooner or later. 
But by the time he does, that boy is so dried out, I was afraid that when I shot, I'd set him on fire. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Convict's name was Otis Lee Hicks. The place we waited was Quito Buck Quito. Yes, sir, you take a man's water and chuck away, he's got to come out. Boy, you're gonna be laying track. Digging or you try to give me any of that smart nigger. You follow me? Yeah, Captain. I didn't hear your report in. Took a horse from us. But we got their general location. They ain't gonna slip out. Ah, well, first light we commenced the hunt. Get him holed up like that uh, convict Otis, huh? <laughs> Ain't gonna be like that, Captain. Why not? Man knows he can ride past your deputies and they won't shoot. Man knew he could ride out of Hadleyville with Frank Miller coming to kill him four guns to one, but he stayed. Mr. Kane is a very simple man with a simple mind. Running is cowardly. Captain. Whatever happened to Frank Miller? Same thing that happened to most dead men. Got too close to the man's gun. Well, just so you don't worry, tell our people to shoot Kane on sight. Fact of the matter is, I'm getting a little weary of this party. Money. If he kills me, fame puts you under. I told you there'd be times like this. Certainly no way to talk to him, is there? Uh-uh. I'd never let you get close enough. He likes to shoot at a distance. Show what a fine marksman he is. He's better than a fair shot, too. Always with his sights on men running scared. Never had the game shoot back at him, has he? You got the sharps. Frank Miller with no trouble. Look, then I had no choice. It was either that or run. Well, that's a choice. I can't shoot him in the back. You see, knowing the man is the same as knowing any game, what it's likely to do. Only with a man, it's easier tracking and moving in for the shot because you don't have to get upwind of him. He's facing you now.
tell you something. That's why I went to jail for three years. I couldn't pull a trigger either. I had a man in the sights. Lower my weapon. Here. Take this thing. Got arrested. Got the deadly killers, ain't we? Now, a man may have some degree of a brain, but ain't no man that's got the nose of a critter. Captain. Especially a wild critter. What? I believe you got somebody up window you now. There they are, up on the ridge. put away. No. Just uh, ten dollars right here. Well, ain't no sense taking you to court then, is there? Huh. Mexico's that way. I know where Mexico's at. What I don't know is where you're going. Went back to Hadleyville. File a complaint, testify against the ward, see if I can get him charged with killing you boys. You'd do that. Tell him I damn well try. Well, maybe if we both showed up, testified against him, we could make it stick. Well, I uh, know where we could catch us a train. Let's go. See if we can't scare him to death. Uh -huh. train should be along soon. It comes, we run for it. Where to? Now, just over the hill, about a mile.
No way we can cross that open ground, Captain. I tell you to, you will. I believe I'd rather quit first. This ain't the army, Captain. Man don't like the duty. He's got a right to resign. Come over here. You too, Alonzo. Boy, get me a branch. What's going on down there? Well, looks like we're gonna have ourselves a little parlay. Come on, get going. I ain't back of nothing. Put your guns down. We didn't call the meeting. Well, I, I'm supposed to recite a piece. Tell Mr. Kane he can go on home. Nobody heard him. Tell Mr. Irons if he comes in peaceably. We'll take him to the justice and get his matter settled. I'm saying that. What's the matter with you? whole matter. It, it never did feel right. See, I'm talking as man now, but I still work for Mr. Ward. You understand? He pays me for what I know how to do. He's shoveling us some kind of load. You do the talking or you? I'm listening. You haven't said anything yet. What I'm saying is, if I can help, give you something without giving you everything, I will. You understand? I didn't know he was going to shoot. I swear to God, I didn't know.
his cane upstairs. She's in the dun. Gentler than your husband was. If the bullet doesn't get me, I think he's gonna. Well, the doctor will be here in a few minutes. He'll fix you up. Sure. Thanks for coming, Doc. before Ward comes back. Well, let's just take him to Dr. Losey's and then ask Judge Patton for a court order to stop. I'm sorry, but my office will be the first place they'd search. Uh, if Ward wants him, no court order is going to stop him. Even if we could get Patton to sign one. Well, somebody will take him in. I could use a little of your face. I'm afraid we have to get this man out of here right now. He needs attention. Well, you know anybody in town willing to take in a wanted outlaw? The hotel. That just might be the best place. It's right in the middle of town. Everybody is close by. What could Ward do? Any place. Maybe. Alonzo, check out the stockyard. Well, it's just like last time. Huh? It's not like that at all. I mean, who's Ben Iron? We don't even know him. We're not just talking about irons. Will Kane's deep in it, and you're turning your backs on him again. Ward will take them both into custody, bring them the morning sessions, and the whole matter will be cleared up. Judge. Cain and Irons wouldn't live through the night, and you know it. This has to be handled according to law, John. You understand that? If you approach Ward, I, I mean, what if you gave him our assurance Will and this man Irons will appear? Oh, I can't do that. I have to be approached by their counsel. Harold, where are they going to get a lawyer to speak for them? It's a legal matter. got nothing to do with us, as I see it. No, it's got everything to do with us. I'm 
going to make an announcement. For your own safety and to relieve your minds of any fears, no one is to leave this room until we've apprehended a fugitive outlaw known to be hiding somewhere about. And the man giving him aid. I mean, no one. Doc, I understand you made a call out of the stockyards. One of the hands took sick. Well, is the man going to live? Or is he bleeding to death? You all entertain yourselves. Well, it's out of our hands now. Twice today, I could have been dead. Day's not over yet. Where's Ward? He'll be coming directly. Let's go. Oh. I'll deal with Ward when he gets here. as much time as you can, huh? Ain't no sign of them, Captain. Oh, they're here. They're around here someplace. Look for them. know you were in town. What room is Mrs. Kane in? 20. You would do me a favor, would you? Run across the street, buy me a bottle of whiskey, and bring it to the room. Back in town. He's up in room 20.
the doctor up here right away. I'll go. Well, Virgil, I'd, I'd rather you try and find Harold Patton, see if you can get him up here. I'll go get Dr. Losey. Be right back. No, Will, I'm gonna go. You stay here. Will, please. I'm tired of just waiting. I'm a part of you, so I'm in this too, and I want to do something. Now, come on, I want you to come over here and rest for a few minutes. Come on, Will. Please. All right. Close your eyes for a while. You can't do it all yourself, Will. Doors, bust them in. I'll be in the saloon. Huh. You stay put, you understand? There ain't gonna be any shares given out for this one. I'll say I was there the night Harold Boyd became famous. <laughs> so what we have is a shirt-tail horsebreaker who has tried to interfere with the law. I told him to desist. I warned him. Instead, I see him give aid to a fugitive, wanted, dead, or alive, for the crime of murder. I shot Ben Irons before witnesses, as is my duty by law to stop any wanted felon. Anybody who interferes is also a felon, and I have the right to shoot him on sight. Dr. Losey, will you come with me, please? Kind of busy tonight, aren't you, Doc? Whereabouts you want him to go, ma'am? My husband and Ben Irons are at the hotel, Mr. Ward, in room 20, if you want to go over and arrest them. I'm sure that everyone here will watch with great interest. They're all very good at watching. Just knock on the door, Mr. Ward, and tell them who you are. But for God's sake, do it before Ben Irons is dead. If I shot the man to kill him, why would I want to save him? Ward, it's my duty to Your help that man. Your duty ends at my jurisdiction. something to calm her down.
What are we going to do about them two desperados over there in that hotel, hmm? Sitting down or standing up doesn't make any difference to me. You're going to go out with one last kit no matter what. Go ahead, Kane. Go ahead, Kane. Do it. Do it. Reach for it. Do it. Do it. Sitting down, huh? That's fine with me. I'm gonna blow you right through that wall, Kane, on the count of three. That's one. Two. Same as when I tracked the convicts and waited for them to come to water. Yep, there's a hard way of doing things, and then there's an easy way. Oh, yeah, he's gonna come out of there first light, dragging that outlaw up to the courthouse, expecting a crowd to line the street. Hail the hero! Well, there ain't gonna be no crowd, Mr. Kane. Hey, boy, come in here. You run an errand for me. I mean it now, you hang on. <laughs> what are you gonna do if I don't? 
Come after me? Wouldn't surprise me none. Suppose you could slip down to the depot, send a wire for me. Uh, uh, send it where, Judge? State Capitol. Here, I got it written out for you. Yes, sir. Everybody gone home, except you, Miss King. I'm supposed to tell you not to go near the hotel. Doc, I'm afraid that goes for you, too. Captain say court opens at 7 a.m. this morning instead of 9. Keep those people off the street. Mr. Kane? I'm supposed to tell you that court session this morning's at 7 o'clock. Mr. Kane? You're late. You're gonna leave here in leg irons. Your Honor, this man is gonna be arraigned on counts of aiding a fugitive, resisting arrest, oh, no. and will be remanded to my custody pending an investigation. Order, 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 order. Order. Mr. Ward. This court wired state authorities and received verification Ben Iron was in prison during the time in question, which means you went after the man knowing he was not a fugitive. You're making a serious mistake. No. The mistake was in hiring you, Mr. Ward, which we will presently rectify with a warrant for your arrest.
The only law you got is this piece of tin worth about two bits. Now you got nothing. Boy. Range closing in on you, Captain. What you need this for? That's what you think you're doing. You got enough on your hands without me. Boy. You got something on your mind, just hold it right there and say it. A little closer than you'd like, huh? I got something for you, Mr. Ward. Ah, uh, well, there's a whole mile of nerve between holding a warrant and serving it. Let's see it.